Ever wondered why transmission line voltages often seem to hover around multiples of 11 kV? You might be surprised to learn that it's not a hard and fast rule. It's a common belief that voltages like 11 kV, 33 kV and 132 kV are the norm. But that's not the whole picture. In reality, there are many transmission line voltages that don't fit neatly into this pattern. For instance, voltages like 400 kV, 765 kV and 800 kV are also quite common. These examples clearly demonstrate that not all transmission line voltages are multiples of 11 kV. So, it's a myth to think that the world of electrical transmission revolves solely around these 11 kV increments. In fact, the truth of voltage selection is much more complex and fascinating. It involves a mix of historical practices, engineering considerations, and evolving technologies. So if it's not all about 11 kV multiples, what's the real story? Let's dive in. One common theory attributes the 11 kV pattern to the form factor, a mathematical concept. But does this hold water? Let's dive in. The form factor is the ratio of the root mean square of a waveform to its absolute average value. For a sinusoidal wave, it is 1.11. It's a nifty mathematical concept indeed, but when it comes to voltage selection in power systems, it doesn't quite fit the bill. Consider this. If we were to strictly follow the form factor, we'd expect to see voltages like 11.1 kV, 33.3 kV, 66.6 kV, 133.2 kV and 222 kV. But in reality, we see voltages like 11 kV, 33 kV, 66 kV, 132 kV and 220 kV. These figures don't exactly align with their theoretical form factor counterparts, do they? This discrepancy tells us that the form factor isn't the driving force behind the selection of transmission line voltages. It's a piece of the puzzle, but not the whole picture. So if it's not the form factor, then what? The answer lies in an old engineering practice. The true explanation for the 11 kV pattern can be traced back to a simple concept, voltage drop. Now, what does this mean exactly? Well, as electricity travels along power lines, it encounters resistance. This resistance causes the voltage to decrease, a phenomenon we refer to as voltage drop. Historically, electrical engineers had to factor in this inevitable drop when deciding on the transmission voltage. This is where the 10% buffer comes into play. If the end goal is to have a receiving voltage of say 10 kV, engineers would set the sending voltage at 11 kV. This extra 1 kV accounts for the anticipated voltage drop during transmission. Following this logic, if you wanted a receiving voltage of 30 kV, you'd set your sending voltage to 33 kV and so on. This practice has led to the prevalence of multiples of 11 kV in our transmission system. But what about transformer ratings and the modern considerations? Let's talk about that. You might have some questions about transformer ratings and why exactly a 10% buffer was chosen. And what about modern systems? Well, when you see transformer ratings like 33 kV slash 11 kV, it's all about handling the incoming higher voltage and stepping it down for distribution. It doesn't necessarily mean there's a 10% buffer in every case. As for the 10%, it's more of an approximation than a hard and fast rule. The actual voltage drop depends on the current, which can vary. It's a practical choice engineers found effective. For higher voltage transmission lines like 400 kV and 765 kV, the 10% rule becomes less relevant. Modern systems employ techniques like capacitor banks to minimize voltage drop, making precise multiples of 11 less crucial. Additionally, higher voltages with lower currents experience less line loss, like I-square R losses and corona effects. So, while the historical practice of adding a buffer explains the prevalence of certain values, it's not the only factor, and the landscape is evolving with advancements in transmission technology. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions about power systems or transmission line voltages, leave a comment below. If you learned something new, smash that like button and share this video with your engineering buddies. Don't forget to subscribe for more in-depth explorations of the fascinating world of electrical engineering.